User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at Ugetastic.com. Hi, it's Mike with Ugetastic. I'm sitting down with Eric Kingery, who runs the Refactor Chicago Group, formerly the PHP Chicago, or was it Chicago PHP? Chicago's PHP community. Chicago PHP community. Uh, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. We're here uh, at the SCNA conference in Chicago 2013, SCNA 2013. Should have said that in the beginning, but that's okay. We'll keep going anyways. Uh, so the Refactor Group, what, what is the Refactor Group, and then how did you get involved and, and get that started? Sure. So as I mentioned, we started at Chicago's PHP community meetup. Mm -hmm. um, that was started about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And we had success, yeah, but it was just hard to uh, retain people throughout the groups because we had a disparate range of fairly in-depth topics. Yeah. Um, and we found a lot of beginners... Uh, I think we're alienated by some of the more advanced topics mm -hmm. we were they diving into. In the <laughs> yeah, and so um, we also realized when we were looking for speakers that a lot of the problems that the PHP community deals with and the mm -hmm. challenges are not PHP specific. So right. a lot of languages have web frameworks, but more importantly, a lot of technologies are outside of the language specific details right. so we were interested in mongodb as well and how to design for mobile and yeah. how to use javascript effectively but with a php flavor exactly um but those are problems that people from all communities all, all language specific tech mm -hmm. communities deal with so um we wanted to broaden the scope and bring in people from all different communities right. and then refocus on not just how to be a better PHP developer, mm -hmm. but how to think in a way that allows you to be a more effective software professional. Right. So were you able to, but how did that change that dichotomy between advanced topics that go over the head of, of, of beginners to um, being too low level and also alienating people who are are more experienced. Sure. So it's just easier to have a wide range of topics mm -hmm. on both of those fronts. Uh, so in PHP, you know, you can only cover the beginnings of PHP so many times without mm -hmm. being repetitive, and you can cover the beginnings of a wide array of technologies: mm -hmm. JavaScript, HTML, CSS, design. But then also we're expanding it to include. Just refactoring ideas, so right. recruiting, um, you know, the importance of diversity in technology. <clears throat> we want to go beyond the scope of just one specific language to cater to more people, you know, both on the beginner level and the more advanced level. Mm -hmm. There will still be some meetups that m more advanced people will want to attend. Some of the architecture-focused ones, yeah. and um, you know, we want to. There will still be a split, I think, mm -hmm. but there's just a much broader range of topics we can cover right. for both both sides. And uh, and as far as like, but in, in keeping with your core membership, are you still? Do you find yourself still doing more stuff with PHP, or are you um, bringing in a, a different crowd that maybe is totally on something else? We. We just rebranded, so we've only had one meetup under the oh, okay. Factor Chicago one. name, um, mm -hmm. and we've got the second one coming up um, November sixteenth, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but Jen Myers, and this will be after that. Cool. Uh, okay, yeah, great. Uh, so yeah, Jen Myers is coming to talk about design, okay. and um, what we found with that challenge of retaining people mm -hmm. is that a lot of the, well, I talked to a lot of the people who had been coming for years and mm -hmm. a lot of the core members and they were all open to broadening the scope because oftentimes they had moved on from PHP in their careers as well and so it really just made sense for the core people who were showing up repeatedly mm -hmm. and since um, retain, retaining people for me for me it was a challenge it made sense to uh, just branch on from there right we may still be PHP centric just based mm -hmm. on my network but you know and people's right. networks who they know 
but the point is now we can more easily engage someone from the Python community or the Rails community and come talk about things um, that you know might not have been as relevant in, in the past. Yeah, because it's, it's interesting. It makes me think about um, there was a debate I had, I had heard about what language should we be using to uh, do presentations. That if you um, go and see a JavaScript presentation or, or a, a, a general topic, and you might not be a JavaScript developer, but it's about solid principles, for say, for example, and and it's it's presented to you in Java, but you're a JavaScript developer and you don't know Java, so you know how how what should the expectation be of, of the people in the audience? And some of the arguments were that if you're a decent developer, you should be able to just read code and understand the shape and the pattern. But sometimes I, I found that having uh, something that reduced that, that um, impotence mismatch and saying, okay, uh, you know, the, the, the fundamental concept is, is X, but if I at least present it in something that's a, a common idiomatic language, is, it, is that something that you're looking at? You know, you're, if you do a presentation, it's probably gonna be with PHP as your Sure. Um, so the way I would look at that is kind of, again, splitting it into the audience that you want to speak to. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about the solid principles and you're introducing them, you should be able to do that in a way that's language agnostic. Right. Um, and any language that you put up there uh, should be readable, things should be named properly. If you can do that in a straightforward way, even if someone doesn't know Ruby, for example, um, they should be able to pick up on the concepts if it's an introductory mm -hmm. talk. If you're doing an advanced talk, then you know you could cater to JavaScript de Java developers or people who are doing C++. Mm -hmm. That would be fine. And then more advanced people who would be drawn to that talk probably have either been exposed to those languages or would be able to pick up the context from the presentation and still get value out of something that's not in their primary language. I just you know, wanting to take a step back and just go back to how you got involved in the PHP community here in Chicago. What what um, how did you get involved with the user group? You know, way back a few years ago. Sure. So I co-founded it uh, mm -hmm. with a recruiter actually, and we've kind of moved away from that focus. And that was another one of the reasons for rebranding. We mm -hmm. wanted it to be more about the community. And um, <clears throat> what I was at Sitter City. Okay. And I was. Um, is Center City a company or? Yeah, so they're a startup in Chicago. They've got a couple of rounds. They were one of the bigger ones along with Threadless. Was oh, that like a babysitter service? Exactly. They got parents and babysitters online. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> I was working with the recruiter to staff up our team there after one of the funding rounds. Mm -hmm. And um, the best move that we made was hiring one of the core Kohana developers, mm -hmm. which is a PHP. Uh, web framework that we use to build out a new version of our product mm -hmm. and so we started getting involved in the Kohana community and through that community we found um, people who were involved in the cake community mm -hmm. and so it was very web framework centric right. at the beginning uh, and then we just kind of branched out from there so um, the nice thing about having a technology specific meetup is the opportunities kind of come in, so Rasmus Leerdorf was traveling through Chicago and said, where's the PHP user group we'd oh, like to, yeah. I'd like to present? Yeah, that's, like, that's an easy win. Yeah, <laughs> Those are a little tougher to come by You know, when you rebrand for generic. And for stuff. the listeners, who's, who's Russ? Oh, he's a creator of PHP. He's the, yeah, he's the creator of PHP, so that's like being at the Ruby group and having Matt come, or being at the Closure group and having uh, Rich Hickey come out, so it's yeah. a significant... Yeah, he works for Etsy now. Oh, okay. So making, uh, you know, home homespun PHP. <laughs> yeah, and he made good points about frameworks, and you know, a lot of the things that he was talking about even were applicable. Um, so even if PHP is not your main language, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people would have been interested in that. So it poses some challenges because you don't get as easy wins, but at the same time, I think exposing, getting getting that caliber of person to present and exposing them to a wider range of um, listeners is a good yeah. thing. I, I'm a firm believer in, in listening to people who are creators, which is 
why we're here. And, and uh, yeah, I agree. It, even if you're a closure person and you have a chance to hear somebody's creative language and framework that's as ubiquitous as PHP, you need to listen. You know, it's, they're, they're going to at least tell you something. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, absolutely. And um, the technology's changed so fast that mm -hmm. even if you're on the cutting edge um, of, say, PHP, you might have missed server-side JavaScript and mm -hmm. a lot of, and, and now functional languages and yeah. you know, the advances that the Ruby community's made specifically in micro frameworks and Python the same. If you're not paying attention to any of that stuff, you're probably missing out. Mm -hmm. you know, and paying attention to what other people are doing is a key fundamental way to advance what you do primarily. So. For this meetup, what we're trying to do is move it into um, professional software development and software mm -hmm. engineering practices, because there's um, there's kind of a gap between a formal computer science education and even if you come in through Code Academy or you know Mobile Makers, um, Dev Boot Camps. Yeah, exactly. Which uh, Jen Myers is with now. Yeah, exactly. So I, I they hope I get that right. Yeah. yeah. They teach a lot of valuable things, but the software engineering environment is so complex that yeah. a lot of things are missed. And unless you have a good mentor, unless you happen to work for a company who espouses a lot of professional practices, you know, you can just miss those things. Mm -hmm. So we want to provide an opportunity for people to talk about ways to effectively develop software that aren't covered in classes and may not be covered by their employers or you know maybe they're looking for a job looking to break into it and we want to teach the basics of things like continuous integration unit testing i mean these things aren't taught in classes right of course it, you know in university classes and they're catching up but certainly yeah. when i was there they weren't touch it, touching any of these things HTTP, the basics of hdp putting together apis software process, a lot of these things you just kind of thrown out there as a professional developer and unless you have the opportunity to come to conferences like SCNA, um, it can be difficult to pick those things up. So we want to expand beyond PHP and talk about how to pro develop software in a professional environment effectively and so we think we have a better chance doing that in the um, community. with a wider exposure. Yeah. Or, yeah, in the wider. The wider technology exposure. And, and also, yeah, just refactoring ideas like hiring and, you know, using things like continuous integration. Jen Meyer's talking about developers doing design, which, you know, if, if, if you... <clears throat> but basically getting people away from, I'm a PHP developer mindset, to I'm a developer mindset. Yep. Yeah. So bringing that refactoring concept to so refactoring ideas their careers overall exactly yeah everything so that from full stack, uh, you know full stack from your from the way you think about approaching problems to what tools are now in your in your arsenal for sure because so, yeah you're, you're you're missing something if you are laser focused and in some professions and some careers you know you can do that and you're going really deep mm -hmm. and that's fine and we want to learn from those people as well. But most people I've found in the software uh, profession are benefit benefit more from having a wide exposure, and you need that to operate in an ecosystem that's as diverse as most software engineering teams in um, small to mid range and even large companies these days. So, how does somebody find out about when your next meeting is? Because this is probably going to be after. Sure. Yeah. Um, so we just got on Twitter uh, with the new handle, uh, Refact ORD, uh, as in Ref Chicago O'Hare Airport. Okay, Refact so ORD. Refact, R E F A C T? Yep. Okay, o ORD. ORD. Oh, okay, I get it. Refact ORD. Chicago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Refactor D in Chicago. Uh, but we're on Meetup, uh, mm -hmm. Refactor Chicago.com. We'll redirect, redirect to the Meetup site. Okay, great. Well, all those links will be in the, uh, in the uh, show notes. Well, thanks again for taking the time thanks, to talk with me. Yeah, it's Appreciate great to it. meet you. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.